Welcome to College Night for Juniors Part 2. Our focus for tonight's presentation will be on how to apply to college. So we'll focus on all of the nuts and bolts of what you need to know to apply to college this fall. I want to make you aware of some things before we get into the specifics of how to apply. First, Kellenberg website is a great resource when you have questions about what you're doing when you apply. You would go to Guidance, and then under Guidance, you'll notice that it says College Placement for Students. On this page, we have a lot of great resources. In particular, the how-to section is really wonderful when you have questions about different things about applications. For example, if you need for a college to fill out an SRAR or an SSAR, we have a PowerPoint here that goes through step-by-step -step what to do to actually fill that out and what that is and things like that. So you can always look here for either videos or um, PowerPoints that will give you information about the college process. Second, as you go through this process, it's important to be aware that college admissions is not a level playing field. We like to think that if you have certain grades, everybody with a certain grade and above is going to get into a college. But unfortunately, with the way that college admissions is nowadays, this is not what happens. I'm just going to give you, um, I'm going to read from an email that we had gotten from Northeastern in the past year and a half that talks a little bit about how they pick students for their regular decision last year. And so what they said was, to provide you with some further insight into this cycle, we'd like to share the following context. We received more than 96,000 applications this year, representing a 6% increase in applications from last year. Our early decision applicant pools were robust and filled a significant portion of our fall Boston class. The regular decision applicants are by far our most competitive group of applicants to date. And this is important. While all applicant preferences were considered, decisions for each enrollment opportunity must take into account major availability, program compatibility, and financial considerations, which is why two similar students may receive different decisions. So um, they don't necessarily give you the same answer as someone who has the same exact grades as you, and there's a lot of things they take into account when they're trying to form their class. So this is something you want to keep be aware of as you're applying to your colleges. They also said from Northeastern, we recognize there were numerous strong and competitive applicants we were not able to offer admission this year. Please remember our decisions are a reflection of the full applicant pool and our enrollment goals, not a reflection of individual applicants' accomplishments. So you could be fully qualified and have not gotten into Northeastern and someone else who had similar grades maybe did get in. So this is just something you want to be aware of when you are applying to schools in the fall. So what are some things that you can do to combat this kind of not necessarily level playing field? First of all, um, I can't overestimate to you the importance of early decision at certain colleges. Early decision, you'll hear later, is the deadline where you apply early, you hear back early, but you only do this for one school and you commit to that school and that's where you're going to go in the fall. I'll give you an example of why ED can be really important at certain schools. So um, two years ago, NYU took 55% of their freshman class from early decision applicants. If you are able to afford applying to a school early decision, if this is your number one school that you've always wanted to go to and it's a highly competitive school, this can be a way that maybe gives you a little bit of an edge in this process when you apply in the fall. But you have to be very aware of how much it costs for you to attend that school. So we had talked in the fall about something called the net price calculator that by law has to be on every college's website. Um, I would definitely check that out and see what number they would be approximately expecting you to pay if you were to attend that school. And if that number is not in a doable situation, then you need to stay away from early decision. Um, so I'm not advocating that you sell your home to do early decision. I know for many of your, these, our families, uh, money is the biggest factor in determining what school you're going to go to. I know for my family, I was not able to do early decision. I definitely had to consider how expensive schools were when I picked my college. Um, but if it is something you can afford, um, I don't want to underestimate how much of an importance it can make at some of those highly competitive schools. So something you should consider is, can we afford to do early decision or not? Okay, but 
don't sell your home to do this, okay? Uh, $320,000 worth of debt is not worth it if this is a big expense for your family. If you're millionaires, maybe you look at it, right? Um, so that's one thing that you can consider. Um, now, something that everyone can do, regardless of finances, is diversify your college list when you apply in the fall. Don't apply somewhere just because your friend is applying there. Um, so something to keep in mind, the more Kellenberg students apply to a school, the harder it's going to be for you to get in unless you're the number one student from that group of people applying to that school. So just to give you an example, um, University of Tennessee became very popular. So from 2022 to 2023, just with Kellenberg students, the number of applicants doubled. Okay, That's not something you can control. So if you diversify your schools and you apply to other schools that are maybe not on social media as the IT school, then you can maybe have better chances of getting into more of your schools. So try schools maybe in other states, uh, schools that you don't hear everyone's applying to. Um, a kind of unused section of the U.S. that I feel like a lot of Kellenberg kids don't apply to is the Midwest. So if you're willing to go to Ohio or Illinois or Indiana, um, sometimes with schools, if they're looking for people from a certain state and they don't have as many New York applicants, you might have a better chance of getting in. So if you're looking for a big sports school, maybe University of Kansas. They have an excellent basketball team, and they definitely do not have a high number of students from uh, New York and definitely from Kellenberg applying there. Um, so that would have a similar feel to something like a Clemson, but you're going to have less Kellenberg students applying. So I would definitely consider doing something like that. Just to give you another example, uh, Binghamton had 188 students from Kellenberg apply this year. Only 53 of those students got in. A college can't take 100 students from one high school. They just can't. It's too many. So I want you to apply where you would like to, but also diversify your list. And that means, of course, reaches, targets, and safeties in terms of your grades. Um, I would also, though, look at you know what's financially a little bit more doable, things like that. But Think about geographically or just a little bit outside the box of applying to a school that not too many people do. Um, I know that Lycoming uh, is a school that we've sent Kellenberg kids to, not a lot of them, but the ones who have gone there have really liked it. It's a little smaller school in Pennsylvania. Susquehanna is another one that we don't have a ton of applicants, right? Whereas something like Marist or Sacred Heart or Loyola are ones that a lot of Kellenberg students apply to. So use Naviance to help you find schools that have what you want that would be a great fit for you. Um, but maybe are a little different than what every other Kellenberg student is applying to. And if you have that nice diversity of your list of, you know, definitely apply to South Carolina if that's your top school, right? Um, but I'm going to tell you right now, probably half your class is going to be applying there, right? So try to find other schools, like maybe University of Mississippi, Louisiana State, um, Kansas, as I mentioned before. They all would have that similar feel and maybe don't have as many applicants to, from Kellenberg uh, applying in the fall. Something else I want to make you aware of, uh, in the past, SUNY has had a free application week, and that tends to be in the beginning of October. In the past, um, you were able to apply to five SUNY schools for free for that week. So keep your eyes peeled on that. I'm not sure if they're going to do that again this year, but they have for the past two years, which actually is one of the reasons why Binghamton had such a high number of Kellenberg students apply. The 188 was because a lot of people did the free app week and included Binghamton. Um, so just keep your eyes peeled for that because that would be a nice way to cut some costs on uh, application fees. The final thing I want to talk to you about is test optional colleges. A lot of times people see test optional and think, well, I don't have to take the test at all. It means don't take the test, right? This is not the best way to approach test optional. Um, what I would do is take the test and then decide. Now, hopefully, you've already taken an SAT and or an ACT in the spring. If you haven't, I would definitely try to take at least one of those tests in the fall, see what your grades look like, and then compare it to what SAT or ACT scores normally get into the college before you decide whether or not you're going to go test optional. Something that you have to really think about is that some colleges will offer higher scholarship money to students who submit scores versus ones who do not and go to the test optional route. Now, is every college like that? Definitely not. Um, some schools have always been test optional, were test optional before COVID even hit, and there are ones where it wouldn't affect your scholarship money. But for some schools, it does. So having the test score so that you can make the best decision for what is best both for you getting into the college 
and also for you getting the most scholarship money. Uh, it helps if you have those test scores because then you're making a decision based on facts and not just on, well, I think I'm going to do poorly on the ACT or I'm going to do poorly on the SAT. Now remember, we don't send test scores to colleges. You do. So it's totally possible for you to send your test scores to certain colleges and not to others. Um, so this is why I would take the test and then you make your decision once you get your grades. I also want to remind you that your counselor and also the college placement office are here to help you out if anything comes up that you have questions about. So please reach out to us whenever you need help. And don't forget to read the college news note emails I send out since those will give you important information about what you should be doing throughout the college application process. I would now like to introduce Mr. Tahaney, who will go through the different types of deadlines you will see when you apply in the fall. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ronan. Hello to all the parents and students out there watching this video tonight. My name is Mr. Tahaney. I'm one of the college counselors here and I'm going to be talking to you guys tonight about some of the application deadlines. Now, there's a lot of different information you're gonna hear out, out there, but when it comes down to the application deadlines, there's just a couple of titles we want you to become familiar with. The first one is early decision, otherwise known as the ED. And the early decision, I always tell my students that that D kind of stands for danger because once you decide to go early decision to a college, that's, and you get accepted, that's a legally binding obligation. That's something we talk to the parents about. We make sure they sign a certain form. I have to sign a certain form. And once we discuss that and you get accepted, you have to be prepared to pay the full sticker price. You may not get any scholarship money. So I say danger only in the fact that you have to be aware of that. Now, it's a great opportunity if you're not afraid of how much the college costs and that's your number one choice and it's very competitive, that's actually a good option to use as long as you can financially manage that bill. Then you have early decision two. And that's just for people who maybe don't get their first early decision choice. They can early decision to another school after that. But you can only early decision one school when you are applying. Now, each college would have different dates you have to be prepared for, and you can find them on the college websites. But I'll go into our next type of application deadline. So besides early decision two, then you have early action. Early action is a non-binding agreement. We suggest that you use early action for a college that's in your target that you have the grades for, you have the scores for, and it's a school that you really want to go to, and you want to find out a little earlier, and maybe you did your applications earlier, so you don't want to wait for those decisions to be made. You'd rather find out sooner. It's human nature. Some people will finish the applications early. Some people finish the applications a little later. So if you're an early bird and you want to get those done, you can go with the early action decision. If you're a little late to getting your applications out, as long as you hit the due dates, you can go regular decision and you simply would find out a little later in the season. And it, when you go to a college website, it'll tell you the dates for that. Then we have rolling admissions. Rolling admissions are as you apply, they tell you a couple of weeks later whether you get in or not. There's not a set release date where with the other applications for early decision, early decision two, early action and regular, they'll give you a specific date when their yeses or nos or waiting lists will come out. So it's a little more of a hard number where rolling emissions will tell you as you go. Now, for those of you who plan on maybe applying early decision or plan on applying early action, we do offer here at Kellenberg the last week of summer what we call the college application boot camp, where we have a bunch of college counselors in the library and we actually go through the Common App and fill it out with you. I highly suggest you do the college application boot camp um, there'll be an email coming to you guys later in the school year for you to register for that. There are a limited number, but it's a great program to do if you want to have your applications done, literally done, before senior year starts. So what I want to do right now is I want to show you guys, this is Sacred Heart University. This is their important dates and deadlines. So what I did, I literally Googled Sacred Heart University, I scrolled down to admissions, I clicked on first year students, and it gives you all the different dates here. For example, uh, the first date we have here is the early decision, which I already mentioned to you guys. And there's the date, November 15th. So it has the date, it's due to the college, and then it says decision letters will be postmarked by December 1st. So that's how soon you would find out. So all of the college websites have these important dates and deadlines in their admissions uh, tab. Now, once again, we need these applications done about two weeks prior to that. So if you were gonna early decision, Sacred Heart University, and due by November 15th, we would need that 
probably the first day or two of November, so we can guarantee getting your letters uploaded, getting everything we need to get uploaded, so we can guarantee that it gets there by that date. So just make sure there's always about a two week window where we want the stuff a little earlier so we can guarantee getting it out at the proper date. Now, as you're going through the deadlines and the process, be sure to lean on your college counselors. They're there to help you out. Everybody in the building is gonna help you get through this process together. Um, it should be something that you look forward to, even though it could seem like a lot of work. Uh, we'll get you through it every step of the way. So I appreciate your time tonight. Right now, I'd like to introduce Mr. Dougal, who will be talking about different parts of the application. Thank you. Good evening. I would like to identify and provide some details regarding the three parts of an application. The first is your part of the application which you send to a college. Next, there are standardized test scores such as the SAT and or the ACT. You also send this if necessary. Kellenberg cannot send standardized test scores for you. The third part is your transcript and your letters of recommendation. We send these parts after you inform us where we should send these materials. Let's now look more closely at each of these three parts. So we want to break down what kind of information you will need to provide on the application. You will most likely be using the common application for most, if not all, your application needs. Beginning in late August and continuing into September, we will help guide you in how to successfully complete the common application. Most of the information you need to provide is very straightforward. You will give information on your personal family background and your education. You will also be asked to provide the name of your college counselor. Please be sure to list your college counselor here, not the guidance counselor who has been with you since freshman year. You may also provide your scores on the SAT or ACT if you need to do so. Please know that a number of schools are test optional. In fact, many of them now are test optional, which means that you do not have to send the scores to be admitted to the college. A list of test optional colleges can be found on your Naviance account. Some schools are test blind, which means the schools will not review your scores even if you decide to send them, so there's no reason for you to do so. Finally, other colleges will require you to send your scores. Please see your counselor for advice on whether or not you should send your scores if any colleges you're applying to are test optional. Also, you will have an opportunity to list your activities that you have participated in at Kellenberg. Please know that the nature of certain clubs is self-explanatory such as speech and debate or chess club. But other clubs, such as cross or salt or Faustino club, for example, those would require a brief explanation since a college admissions counselor would not understand the nature of these clubs. You will also need to provide a personal essay. The prompts or essay topics can easily be found on the Common Application website. Kellenberg offers several ways for you to sharpen your writing skills for this essay. First, your college prep class has dedicated six classes for you to brainstorm ideas and to create a rough draft of the essay. In addition, we offer a summer camp for the college entrance essay. This camp is supervised by Kellenberg English teacher, Mr. Flood. For more information on this year's camps, please contact him via email at mrflood at kellenberg.org. In addition, more information on the SA camps can be found on the Kellenberg website. Under the Athletics tab, you'll see summer camps listed down there. Please note, 
that everyone will be submitting a college essay in his or her English or college writing class within the first two weeks of September. This essay will count as a test grade in that class, so it's very important to take seriously the challenge of completing a qualitative essay before the end of junior year. Furthermore, you might have to provide a supplemental essay, a brief additional essay, for certain schools. It is very important to remember that these supplemental essays cannot be generic essays that would be identical to each other. A supplemental essay must focus on the merits of the individual school and what makes it uniquely appealing to you. Kellenberg's part of your application begins with sending your transcript to each college of choice. The transcript has quadrants on it, one quadrant for each year of high school grades. Colleges will receive from us your three-year transcript, which lists each course you have taken each year, the final grade in each course, and the final yearly averages for 9th, 10th, and 11th grades. Underneath your junior year final average, your three-year cumulative average, and your three-year rank will also be provided. Kellenberg will also provide each college with your two teacher letters of recommendation and your counselor letter of recommendation. Your counselor will rely heavily on your completed brag sheet and your completed resume, which should now be, have, have been submitted, in order to write you a more effective letter. I would now like to introduce Ms. Rivero, also now known as Mrs. Scalisi, to talk to you about the process of applying. Good evening. I am Mrs. Scalisi, formerly Ms. Riviero, and I will be explaining to you tonight the process of applying to your colleges. So you may be wondering, what application do I use for my schools? Well, that certainly is a great question because there are a couple different applications out there that you could use. However, most colleges use something called the Common Application, as about a thousand colleges accept the Common App. Let me show you an example using the University of Dayton with what I mean by different types of applications. As you see here on the University of Dayton's website, they use either the Common Application or their own University of Dayton application. If you are going to apply using the Common Application here, you would click on the Common App tab then it brings us to the Common App website. You would then log into your Common App account. Please note that the Common App is typically not available to new users until sometime in early August. At that time, you can create your account. On the other hand, let's imagine that you are only applying to one school, and for now, that school is Dayton. You could apply using the University of Dayton's own application. When you click on this tab to apply, it prompts you to create an account with them and to sign in, if you've already created an account, to access the application. Additionally, some schools do not accept the Common App at all, in which case you will have to apply directly using their own college's application. If you are applying to more than one school, we strongly recommend using the Common App for as many schools as possible. Something to keep in mind is that there is a limit of 20 schools on the Common Application. So that is the maximum number of colleges that you can apply to using that application. One thing that's very important to remember in your college application process that Mr. Tahaney discussed earlier, is that you need to submit your application no later than two weeks before the college deadline. 
and definitely buy the Thanksgiving break if it's a later deadline. As Mr. Tahaney said, there are different types of deadlines for different types of applications. For example, let's take a look at Clemson. Most schools outline their application deadlines on their website that you could see here. You'll see that Clemson, Clemson's application opens on August 1st. Their early action deadline is October 15th, which means an October 1st deadline to meet Kellenberg's deadline. Then their regular decision deadline is January 3rd, which would be a Thanksgiving deadline for Kellenberg. All colleges have their deadlines outlined on their websites, which can be found on their admissions, apply, or undergraduate admissions pages, however they decide to word it. So please be sure to check these pages for each school so that you don't miss any important deadlines. Again, the College Placement Office requires you to submit your application at least two weeks in advance and notify us that you have applied. So let's say here that you're applying to Clemson as an early action applicant. You have to have your application submitted and notify us here at Kellenberg that you have applied by October 1st. Even though Clemson's deadline is October 15th, we need that two week notice. If you are a regular decision for Clemson in this case, they want you to submit your application to them no later than January 3rd. However, Kellenberg requires you to have all your applications submitted by the Thanksgiving break at the latest. If you have a January or a later deadline, you need to submit your applications and notify the College Placement Office that you have applied by Thanksgiving break of your senior year. You could certainly apply earlier too, if you wanted, but you need to be done by the Thanksgiving break. I'll explain a little bit later on on how you tell us that you've applied. So all these dates, all these deadlines, you may be wondering, why does Kellenberg need my application two weeks in advance? If we think about it, there's 505 students in your class. It takes time to send the transcripts and the letters of recommendation for that many people, especially if each person applied to 10 schools. And 10 schools is not an unreasonable number. That would be over 5,000 applications that would need school materials. That is not something that can happen in one or two days. And if we send school materials before you send the application, sometimes the materials don't always meet up and the college will tell you that materials are missing even though we did send it on our end. You need to start the process by sending your application first and then telling us that you have applied. When you apply to college, you need to have your Common App linked to your Naviance account so that Kellenberg can send some of your required materials which are those transcripts and letters of recommendation. Let's take a look on how to link your Common App with your Naviance. But don't worry if you don't remember this down the line. Our College Placement for Students page that Ms. Ronan spoke about before is filled with videos and tutorials for each step of your college application process. So let's look on how to link your Naviance and your Common App together. You would first log into your Naviance account. I am going to use a demo account to show you how to do it. This is your Naviance homepage. When you're on this homepage, you're going to go to the Colleges tab and click Colleges I'm Applying To. You'll see here that there's some applications already into my account. But if you see here, my accounts are not matched. So Kellenberg can't send my documents to Binghamton and Dayton because my accounts are not matched. We want you to click on the Match Account button. This will bring you to the Common App website where you will be asked to sign in and link it to your Naviance account. Once you sign into your Common App account and link your accounts to your Naviance and your Common App, you should then see this pink bar at the top be green when you go back into your Naviance account. The important thing to know here is that if your Common App and your Naviance are not linked together, 
Kellenberg can't send any of your documents over to your schools. You must also remember that you must tell us when you apply to a college so we know where exactly to send everything. So now that you've matched your accounts, you have all your dates and your deadlines, you've applied to all your schools, you have to let us know how and when you applied and when your deadline is. How do you tell Kellenberg that you've applied to college? We have to fill out our handy dandy Google form. To access our Google form, you're going to go to the Kellenberg website and go to the guidance tab at the top. You're going to click on the college placement for students page. Here you'll see this blue button that says college application form. Please make sure you're logged into your Kellenberg email when you fill out the form. You are going to indicate all the colleges that you've applied to and their respected deadlines. If you have more than four schools, you will have to submit multiple Google Forms as there is a certain limit per form. Once we receive the Google Form from you, we'll send your documents, which again are your transcript and your letters of recommendation, to the colleges that you've indicated on your Google Form. Some college applications open up over the summer. You can certainly prepare your application over the summer to have it ready to go to submit in September, but no later than the two week ahead deadline that we've been talking about. We can't send any supporting materials over the summer. Your senior transcript will not exist until after you go through A through F cycle days of your schedule in September. So starting about mid-September, we will be able to send your school materials to your colleges. All applications need to be finished and submitted, and you need to notify us that you applied by the Thanksgiving break if you do not have an early deadline. This is to help make your life a little bit easier, because after the Thanksgiving break, you'll be focusing on your semester exams. You certainly don't want college applications hanging over your head all year. If you have an earlier deadline, you need to submit and notify us two weeks before the application deadline. Another component of your application will be your SAT or ACT test scores if you are sending them to your schools. One thing that Kellenberg does not send for you are those SAT or ACT test scores. If you are sending your scores to your colleges and you're not going test optional, please keep in mind that it takes a while for College Board or ACT to send the scores to your schools. Let's take a look at how you're going to send your SAT test scores to your colleges. You are going to go to your College Board account at collegeboard.org, the SAT, SAT scores tab, which looks like this. You will sign in to your College Board account to view your score reports. If you are sending multiple SAT scores to your colleges to SuperScore, you can send one report altogether that has multiple scores indicated on that report. Now similarly, to submit your, SAT, your ACT scores, excuse me, you're going to log into your ACT account and you will select the scores to send to the colleges that you're submitting them to. You go to the ACT.org website the Scores tab, and you will sign in to view your scores. If you are sending multiple ACT scores to your colleges, you have to send each score report separately to your schools, unlike the SAT. You cannot have all scores sent on one report. You have to send multiple reports if you're sending multiple scores. Now with sending your test scores, you can send them right now if you want, if you know exactly what schools you're going to be applying to. You can send them right after you apply to your college, or you can send them to your colleges right after you notify Kellenberg that you've submitted your college applications. However, please keep in mind that it does take approximately two to three weeks 
for the colleges to receive your scores from College Board or ACT. So now, you've applied to your schools, you told us that you've applied, you've sent your test scores, if you're going to send them. You now may also be applying for something called financial aid. If you are applying for financial aid, you will need to send forms in to the colleges for that as well. I'm only going to touch upon this briefly because we will be having a more in-depth presentation in the fall for financial aid for your senior class. Colleges do indicate on their website what financial aid forms need to be submitted. Let's take a look at Fordham, for example. Fordham has an undergraduate financial aid website. Some schools have different financial aid deadlines for different application deadlines. As you see here, Fordham has different deadlines for early decision one, early decision two, early action, some certain programs for their financial aid as well as their college application. Right now, let's take a look at Fordham's regular decision application for financial aid. Here, it outlines important information, it outlines deadlines, what to expect, and as you can see on the first bullet point, the important information is that you have to complete a FAFSA form, as well as a CSS profile to file for their financial aid. The FAFSA form, free application for federal student aid, you have to complete to apply for federal student aid, such as grants, work study funds, and loans. FAFSA is for federal student aid. To access the FAFSA form, you will go to studentaid.gov. The FAFSA form should open up on October 1st. However, as some of you know, quite the debacle with the FAFSA form this year, things may change in the future. We will certainly be keeping you updated on all the information that we may receive regarding FAFSA forms. Please keep in mind that you apply to your colleges first and then you fill out the FAFSA as you have to indicate on your FAFSA form where you applied so they know where to send the form to. You can certainly fill out your FAFSA form as you're doing your college applications, but you need to submit your college application first before sending your FAFSA form. The colleges need something to link your FAFSA form to, which would be your college application. Please note that when you're filling out your FAFSA form, you're going to be filling out the 2025-2026 school year FAFSA form. If we go back to Fordham's financial aid page, you will see that they are taking note of something called a CSS profile. Here at Fordham, it says you have to have a FAFSA form and a CSS profile to receive maximum consideration for all types of aid. A CSS profile is not needed at every school. The school will indicate on their website if they do need you to fill out this additional form. If your school does require a CSS profile, this is what the website looks like. It is through cssprofile.collegeboard.org gives you information of what is the CSS profile, information on completing the application, and it also will give you a list of what schools may need the CSS profile. Your college should indicate on their website that they do need a CSS profile if they need it. But again, all colleges need the FAFSA form to be filled out, but not every college needs that CSS profile. Make sure you're reading all the financial aid application information to see what you may need or what you may not need. Now we've talked about applications, we've talked about test scores, we've talked about federal aid. Let's talk about scholarships, as there are a few different types of scholarships. 
there are two types of scholarship aid, merit-based aid and need-based aid. There are also outside scholarships that you can apply for that are not affiliated with your colleges. With merit-based aid, you are automatically considered for these scholarships from the colleges when you apply to the school. There is no extra application. However, please know that some schools will not even consider you for merit-based aid if you haven't filled out a FAFSA form. That's why that FAFSA form is very important. For college-specific scholarships, you may have to fill out other specific forms and applications to apply for a scholarship that they are offering. This can be a little bit confusing, but St. John's does a great example of outlining their merit-based aid and their additional scholarship aid. So let's take a look. Here you'll see on their website that they have a bunch of scholarship information. They indicate that they offer academic scholarships or merit-based aid. With the academic scholarships or the merit-based aid, the student's admissions application is used to automatically determine the merit scholarship eligibility. No additional application is required here for St. John's. An example of this, which you can see here, is their Catholic High School Scholarship. Where if you scroll down on their website, you'll see other types of scholarships that you have to apply for. This is something, for example, right here, application scholarships, like their Catholic Scholars Program. The other form of scholarships are outside scholarships. These are scholarships that you search for and apply for yourself. They are not affiliated with your colleges. Your colleges will put on their website the different scholarships that they offer that are affiliated with them, such as these application scholarships at St. John's or their merit-based aid at St. John's, but there are a lot of other scholarships out there that you can look into. The College Placement Office will send out scholarship application information if we get word of any available scholarships that you can apply to. There also is a list of websites on your Naviance account that can help you search for scholarships. This can be seen if we go back to our demo Naviance on your home page, if you click on this Welcome to Naviance sidebar, you will see additional information from your school. Well, I'll click that, it gives all important links, such as the College Board, Common App, FAFSA. So in case you don't remember the websites that I've already spoken about, you can find them here linked into your account. But it also gives you scholarship info, scholarship search, and other scholarship websites for you to look into to see if there are any scholarships that are outside of colleges that you can apply to. Just some reminders as we wrap up tonight's presentation. Any student who is applying to the Naval Academy, West Point, or any other military academy your application has to be submitted by the first week of school. If this is something that you're interested in, please see your college counselor as soon as possible this year. All students have to have their applications submitted and notify the College Placement Office at least two weeks before the application deadline, if it's an early deadline. If it's a late deadline, all applications need to be submitted and you need to notify us that you have applied by Thanksgiving break of your senior year. This is a deadline that we will be constantly reminding you of next year as a senior as well. As always, please reach out to your college counselor if you have any questions. We thank you for your attendance tonight and we hope that you have a great rest of your evening.